new proclamations. What wise men, great men, medical men, professional people have not been able to do, God will do it. All those things that are forgotten, your forgotten strength, your forgotten power, your forgotten revelation, everything you said, I had a dream long ago. And I thought, this is what I will do. I've forgotten now, your forgotten vision will come up again. Passion will come up again. Revelation will come up again. New life will come up again in your life in Jesus' name. Only Christ Jesus has the power of this new year. An unforgettable encounter beckons. We are connecting to the God of wonders this new year for salvation and deliverance. Welcome GCK to Asaba. Delta State, Nigeria, January 26th to 31st, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily and Global Sunday Worship at or 700 hours GMT. Also featuring ministers and professionals conference with Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Young Professionals. It's a new year of wonders this 2023. From the Niger Delta, the oil of anointing will be transported by satellite and all our social media links to over 150 countries of the world. Join the team in GCK audience as the man appointed by God, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komoi, connects the world to an unforgettable encounter with the God of Wonders. Glorious music ministrations by choirs from nations across the world with guest music ministration by Jonathan Lee. Darkness gone. Yeah. Premature death cancelled. Yeah. Yours is now to reap the benefit. GCK, the, the gospel, gospel to every creature. Let us pray. Our great God in heaven, we thank you today. We bless your name for how you brought us together. We do bless your name for the love you've given us for your word. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we study your word together now, you will bless every one of us and help us to be our best in our places of work, in our neighborhood, so that the people who see us and know us will know that we are your own children. And that your grace has touched our lives, changed us and affected us, and has made our work and relationship better with all the people we relate with. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Today we continue with our series in the Colossians. And today we're looking at Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 22. Colossians chapter 3, from verse 22 to verse 25. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong, shall receive for the wrong which he has done, and there is no respect of persons. Chapter 4, from verse 1. Masters, give unto your servant that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. The passage we have read talks about the relationship between the employee and the employer. Relationship between the servant and the master. 
or the relationship between the subordinate and the superior. Whichever way we take it, the passage is telling the one who is responsible to a leader or to a boss what to do, how to do it, that the Lord will be glorified. The passage is also talking to those who happen to be leaders or bosses or employers that we have a responsibility towards God too and that we should treat the servant or the employer in a way that will bring glory to God. As we look at the whole epistle itself, you will see that the epistle to the Colossians addresses the issue of relationship. Our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. God's grace in us makes us new men and new women. Colossians chapter 3 in particular emphasizes that if we are risen with Christ, then we have to live with heaven in view. You go back to Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Here he tells us that if we have had the right relationship with the Lord through repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we must seek those things above. We set our affections on things above, not on things on the earth. He tells us, therefore, whether we're in the home or in the church, set your affections on things above, with neighbors, with co-workers and employers, set your affections on things above. Wherever we are, wherever we work, whatever our position or status, live with heaven in view. The next section of chapter 3 tells us that we must put off the old man and put on the new man. Still talking about relationships. Verse 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness which is idolatry. Here it says, we should be at peace with ourselves. There must not be a strife between the spirit, the soul, the body, the desire of the heart, of the renewed man, should be in compliance with the word of God and the desires of his body. That is, his body must not be agitating or asking for evil things like fornication. Let there be a new life, new man. And also, your relationship with other people will not be a relationship that is full of iniquity, immorality, such as fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. Let there be a pure relationship. In verse 8, but now ye also put off all the anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, evil or filthy communication out of your mouth. I'm still talking about a renewed relationship here. When you put off all these things, wherever you find yourself, then you live like a new man. You have a new relationship. And because of the new life you have, then other people will know that something has happened to you, and what goes between you and them will be completely different. Verse 9 says, Lie not one to another. Lie not one to another. Then in verse 10, and I've put on a new man. So then, in this chapter 3, we are being told of what we have put off, or what we should put off, 
and what we have put on or what we should put on. And in verse 15 he says we should allow the peace of Christ to rule in us. Verse 16, we should allow the word of Christ to dwell in us richly. And verse 17, we should make sure that the name of Christ or the authority in that name is to be our guide. It's telling us that the glory of God should be our aim in all things. Then from verse 18, down what? He becomes specific. And all is telling us we can summarize this way. That the result of this renewal in our lives, the result of the grace of God coming into our lives, making us new Christians, it will result in this, that we become new man, a new woman, a new wife, verse 18, a new husband, in verse 19, a new child, in verse 20, new parent, in verse 21, verse 22, a new employee, and then in chapter 4, verse 1, a new employer. If we all become what God wants us to be, then we can really be totally transformed and become a change agent, become a means or agent of transformation to the messed up world in which we live. In the verses immediately before us, we shall look at two major points. One, the requirement of obedience. And two, the reasons for obedience. Let's go back to Colossians chapter 3. Verses 22 and 23. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 22. Servant, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. Here God gives instructions in particular to employees. You will see that it says in verse 22, servant. And all through the Bible, you find the use of that word, servant. In the days in which the Old Testament and the New Testament were written, there were servants at home because much of the work that a lot of people had to do were done in the home. Employment or the labor market had not been well organized as it is organized now. So you will find that a lot of merchants, a lot of farmers, a lot of shepherds, a lot of people that had employment to employ other people, they made use of the home many times as the workshop. Many times they made, made use of their compound as the place where they will store all the things they had. Or if they were going to sell in the market, they go from the house to the market. And the places of employment were very close to the home. So the people helping in the work also helped in the home. And these people that helped, that worked for somebody, richer or greater serve who paid them for their service. They were referred to as servants. In our world today, the labor market has been organized more than in those days. And the people that were referred to as servants in those good old days are now most of the time referred to as employees. That means there is an employment. It may be in a company, maybe in a school, maybe in a corporation, maybe in a particular set of. But most of the time now, 
that employment is far away from the home, although there are still some few people that have their employment in the home as help, or they have some kind of work that still is based in the home of the people they are working with. They are very, very close to the Bible understanding of the servant. But as we look at the whole principle, the passage has principles referring to employees all together wherever we may be working. And here is what it says. Servant, employees, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with high service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, we must not detach this verse 23 from verse 22. If you notice very clearly in your Bible, the earlier verse, that is verse 22, does not terminate, does not end, because there is a colon there. And then it goes on still referring to this servant, saying, whatsoever ye do, referring to the work situation actually, referring to the employment that we have been employed in actually, Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. The Greek says, do it with your soul. Do it with your mind. And that means, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your attention, don't give divided attention or a kind of service that is not complete to your employers. Whatsoever you do, from the lowest to the highest in that place of work, do it heartily, joyfully, wholeheartedly, with the soul and with the mind. Do it as if you are doing it as to the Lord, and not unto men. God is impartial. He also gives instruction even to the employers. Let's look at chapter 4, verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1. Master, give unto your servant that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Let me remind you once again that in the days in which these verses of the Bible were written, the servant in a way had no say, had no right. The servant could not go to the court and say, I am fighting for my right. You know why? Because actually, you know, in those days, the servant was like a property to the master. Once you were a servant in a place, that was it. You belonged to the master. Your time, your talent, your ability, almost everything belonged to the master. And you would have seen in some of the parables that Jesus Christ gave, talking about the servant to the master. When the servant messed up the business, and he had to be, he had to pay for it. If he was, uh, if he didn't have enough, his wife and children could be sold by the master, so that he could pay for the debt he owed. That shows you how things were in those days. Therefore, the masters had a kind of way they could exert so much from those who were serving them. But you see, when they became Christians, they must be transformed. And now they were being told, Masters, give unto your servant that which is just and equal. We're talking about a time when there was no labor union talking about a time when servants, employees, did not have any right of protest. We're talking about a time when employees, servants, could not go to the court and say that they're making a petition, they're demanding this and demanding that. But God defended the poor. God defended these servants. And he said, Master, 
if you have known the Lord, if you belong to the heavenly Father, here is it. Give unto the servant that which is just. Look at the service they render. Look at the work they do. And without protest, without going to the court, without having to go through the labor union, you give them what is just, what is appropriate for the services they are rendering, and equal. That is, pay them for every minute they put into that service. Appreciate every good thing they do in that service. And then it says, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. That means, treat those servants as you want the master in heaven to treat you. That says more. And for the real converted master or employer, that tells much. Employer, treat the employee the way you want God Almighty himself to treat you. Now let us look at other passage of the scripture that bears on this same thing, telling us of the requirement of obedience. It has said in verse 22, Servant, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. In Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 5, Servant, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of heart as unto Christ. Let's stop here for a moment. The word obey is very specific here. Obey. If we are employees in our places of work, the way people will know that we're Christians, the way people will know that we belong to the Lord, is that we be obedient. Obey here is not talking of something related to moral. It's not talking of anything related to the spiritual. That means this is not saying that the boss in the place of work will direct how you worship God. Or because he goes to a particular church, he will compel you. You must follow me to that church. No. This is talking about the work you are doing for that master. Servant, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. It's not talking about worship. It's not talking about religion. It's not talking about your morals. It is talking about the work you are employed to do in that place. And they are only your masters according to the flesh. And in things relating to that service, relating to that work, relating to that employment, be obedient. And it says with fear and trembling. What the Lord is telling us is this, that if you are an employee, that in the principles laid down in that service, the time to open in the morning, the time to check out, the time to go in the evening, the way the work is to be done, the goals that are set on the production line, and all the things you are expected to do, make sure that you are obedient. The way you spend your time in that place, the way you protect the security and the values of the things in that place of work, it says be obedient to them that are your masters and all the things they expect you to do in relationship to your work. The time you have to turn in a particular report, the time a particular job is to be finished and delivered, in all those areas, be obedient unto them that are your masters according to the flesh. Never argue. Do not be lazy. And do not check your responsibilities. Work with a single heart. And in talking about the obedience, he makes explanation. In this Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5, it says, with fear and trembling, there must be much respect for those who are above us in the place of work. And they have been placed over us 
in the hierarchy in that place of work, they are supposed to give us our job description and our daily routine. They are supposed to supervise what we do. The Bible says we should be obedient with fear and trembling. And then in singleness of heart, with sincerity in heart, with a good motive in our heart, and we are doing it as unto the Lord, as unto Christ. In verse 6, Verse 6, not with eye service as men pleasers. This is what we will find to be very common today. Whenever the boss is not around, many people will not come early enough. But then when the boss happens to be around, then they begin to run up and down. As if they were sincere, as if they were actually doing the work. But over here it says, not with eye service. You will see that this problem of hypocrisy and pretense, eye service, has been a long, long thing. People have been practicing it because, you know, where somebody does not have the grace of God, where human depravity is very much at work functioning, that is what you will observe. But Paul the Apostle, led by the Spirit of God, says, Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as a servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. He says, As you see yourself in that place of work, you are serving the Lord, and you are there to do the will of God. Some people think they can only do the will of God in Christian service, if they are working with a Christian corporation, oh, they say, I thank God. I'm in Christian service, and I'm going to give my best, and I will make sure that every day I serve the Lord, it is carrying out the will of God. So praise God for them, but we need to say this. It is not only those who are in full-time Christian service that are serving the Lord. In the hospital where you are a doctor, where you are a nurse, you can do the will of God and save lives. And in the place where you are working and you are part of the people that make the production come forth in that place, do you know, you can do the will of God and do everything as if this employment were the very service of God. And you do the will of God right there in your corporation or company. You might just be a cleaner. Clean with a difference. Sweep with a difference. For the joy of the Lord. And do not be worried about your overwork and underpay. Leave that in the hands of the Lord. Just do the will of the Lord. Are you a secretary? The boss may not be a Christian. See what you do in that place as the will of God. And never answer back. Never be rebellious. Are you, on the other hand, working with a merchant, working with a trader, and you are supposed to carry this to that other place and sell this at that price? Be faithful. Be faithful. The master may be a Christian, may not be a Christian. Be faithful. And see that God has placed you in that place so that you can shine with gospel light. Never do anything with high service. Do not leave that work and go on visiting when your master, the trader, is not around. Not with high service as men please us, but as the servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Never murmur, never complain. With good will, doing service as to the Lord, not to men. Do not look at your boss as if, well, is the person that has employed me. And if I'm not enjoying the service, I'm going to connive with other people and cheat this man and get money out of him. God's eyes are watching you. Be faithful with good will.
doing service as to the Lord, not as unto men. Verse 8, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be born or free, whether he be a slave, born, who can never leave that service, or is a free man, he can resign any time he wants to. Let us still make sure that whatever is the condition of service there, we are faithful to the Lord, because from his hand shall we receive. In Titus chapter 2, verse 9, Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own master, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, join verse 10, not for learning, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn beautify. The doctrine of God, our Savior in all things. Here, the minister of the gospel is told to exhort the servant in the fellowship, to exhort the employees in the church, that we must be obedient unto our own master. We must be obedient unto our own master. That in so doing, we will please them. Please them, remember I told you, this has nothing to do with religion. This has nothing to do with your morals. You will not commit adultery with your boss. You will not commit fornication with your boss. You see that on the spiritual side. You will not steal. You will not tell a lie. You will not cover him up to deny the Lord and deny the word of God. You cannot do that. That's on your morals. You take your stand. But when it comes to the work you are doing, you must honor him. You must respect him. You must obey him. And you must do the work as unto the Lord. And please him in that work, in that employment, in all things, not answering again, not being rebellious unto him, not doing anything or saying anything that will not show that you are a real child of God. In First Peter chapter 2, Verse 18, servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. We discover today that many employees will rebel against the leadership in their places of work. They will write petitions. They may carry placards. They may go through the labor union and say that a particular boss will not continue in that place of employment. And they can destroy things. We Christians will never join in anything like that. Because we have the Bible guiding us. And this is the doctrine of the Bible, that we will be subject to our masters with all fear. We shouldn't come to the place where, even if our boss in the place of work is not a Bible believer, we do not come to the position where we will have an open confrontation with him, or abuse him, or insult him, or disrespect him, or refuse to carry out its instructions that are related on the work we are doing. Be subject to your masters with all fear. It says not only to the good and gentle. Your master may not even qualify to be respected, but because of his position over you, and because of the word of God, you have to respect him. It says we are to subject ourselves to the masters with all fear, even to the forward, even to the forward, even to the people that are not treating us well, 
even to the people that will bully on us and dribble us and tell us to do this, and it's never appreciated. He never knows how to praise uh, the workers under him for, for jobs well done and how to correct in love, even if he does not know how to do that, still respect him for his office, for his position, not because he is good, but because we are children of God, and the word says, be subject to your master. Read it again, look at it. Masters, be subject to your own, to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward, verse 19. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is this? If when ye be forfeited, that is chastised, that is disciplined, or rebuke for your fault, ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Let's turn to First Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke, count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. It's expressing the same thing, that we who are employed in any place of employment, whether you are a brother or you are a sister, you must make sure that you are an obedient employee, you are faithful, you are keeping to time, you are not cheating them there, you are not covetous, you are not stealing, you are not doing anything that will dishonor the name of the Lord because you are a Christian. Let your own service be with a difference. And the way you talk, the way you function in that place of work, make sure that Everything you do and the job well done will speak a lot to the people there that you are a real child of God. A word for the master, for the superior, for the employer. In Colossians chapter 4, from verse 1, Master, give unto your servant that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. It says here, put yourself in the shoes of these employees, if you are an employer. Because, you see, you have a master, Christ himself, in heaven. And you are his servant. And one of these days you are expecting a reward from your master. And you are expecting that that reward will be commensurate, appropriate for the service you have rendered in the kingdom of God. Oh, he says, you have a master in heaven. You are expecting a reward. And you want that reward to be appropriate to the service you have rendered under the headship or the leadership or the lordship of Christ. He says then, here is your own chance. You are a master. This appears to be your own kingdom, this employment. As you expect the master to reward you appropriately and adequately, reward these employees and these servants appropriately and adequately. You have a master in heaven. And whatever you expect from that master to do to you, do now to the person that is working under you. Do you expect the Lord to be appreciative of you? Be appreciative of your own employee. Do you expect him to correct you in love? Correct the employees in love. Do you expect the Lord to overlook the things you have done that you have apologized for? Oh, then that's exactly what you are to do. 
the people that you have employed, if you are a Christian employer, if you are a Christian master, you are a boss, but you are a Christian, all these that are under you, whether they are Christians or they are not Christians, they've done something, you have corrected them, they have apologized, whatever you, are, you expect of the law, then that's especially, that's exactly what you are to do. You see, there are times when you look at yourself as a servant under the lordship of Christ, there are even times you know you've done something wrong in the service of the Lord. And you go to the Lord and you apologize. And you are expecting the Lord will forgive you when you promise him that there is going to be a change. Well, employees under you too, they sometimes mess up that employment. They sometimes, uh, the turnout may not be like you expect. And they come to realize this. And eventually they say, we are going to change. The production is going to become better. But you say, no, I'm going to deny you employment. You say, no, I'm going to cut off the bread from your mouth. You say, no, I'm going to drive you out. I know you have family. I know you have children. I know you don't have any other place where you can fend for yourself. But what do I care? One day God might be telling you in judgment, what do I care? Because he that meets out judgment without mercy will also have judgment without mercy. Masters, employers, give unto your servants, unto employees, that which is just and equal. Now let me ask you. There are times employees will complain that they are not paid at the right time. Even if they are, even if they are paid what they should be paid, but they are not paid at the right time. And you happen to be a Christian employer. When I talk of a Christian employer, I don't want you to be thinking only of the director of a big company. You might just be a tailor. And you have um, three or four people who are serving under you, learning tailoring. Well, you are an employer for them and their employees to you. You might be a builder. And you have somebody that will carry shovel or carry block or carry water or sand you are employer and they are employees. Or it may be that you are in a home, in a family, and you have a young man or a young boy or a girl working and serving in your family. Uh, you know, that is like employer-employee situation. Or it may be that in the place of work, they put you to supervise the work of other people and their promotion depends on you. Yes, uh, the, the services they enjoy, the remunerations they have, depends on your attitude, your recommendation, or your, or your comments, criticisms of them. That's what we're talking about. Masters, give unto your servants, your employees, that which is just and equal. You see the people that serve, do we even know the good things they're doing? If you're an employer, do you ever move around? Do you ever go around and see the good work the individuals are doing? Apart from salary, do we ever give any word of praise, any word of commendation? Do we ever say thank you? Do we ever encourage the people? At a time when these employers are sick, do we show concern? At a time when they have some peculiar family problems, personal problems, and they have been serving us, do we show any concern for his face, knowing that he have a master in heaven? That whatever compassion, whatever consideration you want the Lord to show unto you as his own servant, then the same thing you ought to show to the people that are serving under you. In Deuteronomy chapter 24. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 15. At his day, thou shalt give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon a, for he is poor, and setteth his heart upon a, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be seen unto thee. He says, if you have employed somebody, you are a Christian, make sure that you pay him his wages. In those days, they used to pay them every day. At other times, they pay them another way. But the master is being told here 
Remember, God cares for the poor. I told you earlier that at that time, there wasn't labor union like we have labor unions all over many places now. But even though there was no labor union, there was a God greater than labor union was defending the rights of the poor. And you know today, the labor union cannot adequately defend the rights of the poor, but God is still there. The Bible is still there. He's still defending the rights of the poor. And brothers and sisters, if we happen to be employers or bosses in a place of work, let us know this word of God, because the way we treat those employers will be the way the Lord will treat us. Think about every employee one by one. Don't just say, put everything, everybody in the same place, because you see, you might say, I'm a good boy. I'm very considerate. I'm very generous. Well, it may be you are generous and considerate. Uh, on 60-70% of your employees, think of those employees one by one. And make sure that you give each one its due. If God has placed you in that responsible position of being an employee, He will give you the wisdom. He will give you the heart, the broad mind, to be able to take care of all the people in that employment. Don't forget all the people, all the people. Make sure that you, there is no partiality. Make sure you don't have any bitterness, any hatred in your heart against any employee. And what we say, of course, for the, uh, for the secular employment, oh, we say much more for church employment. We must make sure that we treat the people with the honor that God wants every one of his people to be treated. Job chapter 31. Job chapter 31. From verse 13. If I did despise the cause of my man servant, of my maid servant, when they contended with me, that is, when they brought a complaint or a need, what then shall I do when God rises up and when he be seated? What shall I answer him? Here we are told, Job realized that the way he treated those men servants and maid servants will be the way that God will treat him. That's exactly the emphasis of Scripture. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 9. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 9. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, for bearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. He says, masters, employers, let us not always be threatening. Whatever little thing an employee has done, I'll fire you. I will terminate your appointment. I will cut off the daily bread from your mouth. I will bring you to poverty. Your promotion depends upon me. And if you don't do what I want you to do, you will suffer for it in this employment. He says, are you not a Christian? Ye masters, do the same things unto them for bearing threatening. Let them feel that there is a boss that loves them, a boss that is considerate, a boss that is kind and nice knowing that your master also is in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons with him. Let's obey the scriptures, and God will honor us in Jesus' name. What are the reasons for obedience? Colossians chapter 3. Now from verse 24. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ. Positively, he says, if we do what is right, now talking to employees in particular, if we do what is right and we never waste time, we do our job, we report in the morning at the right time, we stay till the very end of the day, the closing hour before we leave, 
and we do quality work every hour of the job time when we are there, and we follow the rules and regulations, and we use the expertise, the knowledge, the experience we have to do the very best job in that place of work, knowing that of the law, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. The Lord will reward us. He will definitely repay us. Let's look at verse 25. It says, But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. And there is no respect of person. It says, We as employees, if we do not follow the Bible, we do not follow the word of God, and we do wrong, and we are lazy, and we go about complaining and criticizing in the place of employment, and we go around knocking heads together, heads of employees against the heads of employers, if we are destructive rather than constructive. It says if we do wrong, or if we steal in our covetousness, if we do wrong, we shall receive condemnation, punishment for the wrong that we have done. The Lord is calling upon us that we shall serve with total commitment because the Lord is the one that we are really serving and he will reward us at his appointed time. Let us be faithful and God will reward us for our faithfulness. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer that God will help us so that in our places of work we will do as the Lord expects us to do. Ask for grace. For this is a sin that shows that we really and truly belong to the Lord.